Okay, so I received another tutorial request from a YouTube user named um, No Name, which is kind of a funny name. And um, he was asking how to make cross launchpad effects. So basically an effect that starts on this launchpad and then continues onto another launchpad. So how can we do this? Um, I'm gonna show you guys, um, just to keep things simple, first how to just make a row, start from here, go up, and then continue on this launchpad. And then I'll show you something a bit more advanced, but is really cool as a result, which is basically a wave that will start from this launchpad and then go on to this launchpad. And, um, okay, so first things first, we need this launchpad to light up, right? So we need to set up the tracks correctly. And if you think about it, um, we want one button to trigger the effect for both launch pads. So we're gonna start on this left launch pad and then continue on this right launch pad. And we're gonna trigger it from the left launch pad. So we're gonna have to set this launch pad to receive MIDI from the left launch pad, so launch pad number one, and then send it to this launch pad here, right? So we're pressing this button. So this launch pad should receive from this launch pad and then send it back to here. So that's what this track should do. So we can call it left. So we can call it in left because it receives from left and then out right so that's basically what the track does so if you open the inputs we know that this is launchpad pro number one you can see here so here we're going to set the same input it's going to receive always from this launchpad so the midi in will always be from this launchpad and then the midi two will go to this launchpad so output number two so launchpad pro number two so here we can see we've got two different uh, controllers selected. Launchpad Pro 1, this one for the input, and Launchpad Pro number 2, this one for the output. So it receives from this, but it sends it to this. So all we have to do is channel 3 and arm. So I, I've showed how to do this in the beginning. Just, just note that the, this, this track will receive from this and send to this. So it's pretty simple. And if I turn this off, you can see I'm pressing these buttons on this launchpad and they're sending it to this one. So basically, um, now you can see that if I turn these effects off, if I press this button here, which will trigger the effect, the buttons light up at the same exact time. So what I'll do is, now I've got the effect only here, and I'll put in an arpeggiator again. I thought I already had, um, but obviously not. I'll set this to uh, free mode, and it's uh, especially important to set it to free because then you can work in milliseconds and you can do things a lot more mathematically. So let's set this to 100 milliseconds just for the sake of the argument. And what we'll get here on this left launch pad is this going up like this. And let's only have it repeat once. So it'll just go up and die. So what happens is if we, trig if we copy all of these effects from the left launch pad to the right one, Whenever I press an effect on this launch pad, it will light up the same effect on both launch pads because we've set up the tracks to do that. So if I press this, it will do the same effect. If I press this, it will do the same effect. Now, what do we really want? If we have a look at this effect here, we actually want this effect on this launch pad to finish and then the same effect to start on this launch pad. So we'll do this, boop, and then continue here when this one's here. So when this one's turning off, this one should turn on and then continue. So all we need to do is create a delay to tell it when this one's over, then you can start the effect. And if you remember from the note length tutorials, go and watch them if you haven't, because otherwise you won't understand what's happening. We can create delays. So all we have to do is go into our second launch pad. And again, I'll color these, uh, this number one red, so we know that we're working with this effect, which is the row that arpeggiates. Um, so now we basically got this. And we've got two, long, two note lengths. So basically what a note length does is it simulates, even if I hold the note and then let it go, or if I keep holding the note, it will just turn it on, hold it on for the amount of time that I say, and then turn it off again. That is on note on, so as soon as I press the button. So basically I can say, okay, there are eight buttons here, and each one of them, if we have a look at the rate, last 100 milliseconds. So we're gonna have 100 milliseconds, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, and 800. So we will basically want to create a delay of 800 milliseconds, right? So the amount of uh, buttons it takes to get from one launchpad to another, times, so multiplied, by the rate of the arpeggiator. 
So that's how you calculate the delay that's needed. So in this case, it's really easy. The rate is 100 and we've got eight buttons. So 100 times eight, 800 milliseconds. So you basically want this note length to create a delay of 800 milliseconds. So you just say, set 800 milliseconds. And it will basically say, okay, this will have one note and it will stay on for 800 milliseconds and then turn off. So this does turn off. So we click it and press this button and um, if I turn all of this off, so you can see, if I press this button, poop, it will stay on for 800 milliseconds, okay? And you can see also here, boop. So you actually see it turns on at the same exact time that this um, gets turned off, boom. So basically we need this note length to turn the whole effect on. So we say, okay, this note has turned off. We want this, this is basically saying like, okay, this, this note, this um, effect here on this launch pad is over. So this is basically saying, okay, this note length is starting this effect. So we can say um, left um, has ended, okay. And this one can see, say um, right starts. So basically this one says is the delay that is needed for this launch pad to end. And this one is basically uh, triggered when this turns off. So we need to change the trigger mode. So when this turns off, this one will start. And then we set the length to anything that is enough for this effect to finish. So we can set it all the way to 60 if we want to be sure. And we can turn this effect on. And now we've really got, um, if we have a look, just turn everything off. We've got this, oops, sorry about that. We've got this, and then this one turns on. So we turn the whole effect on we will literally have the delay and then this effect gets triggered. So this delays it, okay, until this one turns off and then this one starts it. So boom, that's how you make a cross launch pad effect. So it's really simple. You just have to set up the track um, for the other launch pad to receive from the, same, from the same launch pad. So they get the effect gets triggered by one button. And then you just copy the effect over and put two note delays in. So, sorry, two note lengths in to create the delay. It's that simple. So let's go back and look at number six. So number six is this. I don't need to solo it. It's, um, it's, uh, it's the wave. And if you remember with the wave, the wave is exactly, um, it's exactly an arpeggiator going, I'll turn this off. Um, it's an arpeggiator going with um, this MIDI effect rack, which basically triggers a row going up and down for every one of these, okay? So you can see already here, we basically want the same thing. It's got a row going and then we want to continue it, only that we're elaborating on that with the vertical uh, movement, which creates the wave. So we can see here, um, this arpeggiator, which is the horizontal one, it's got a time of 20 milliseconds and we've got eight buttons. So all we have to do is eight times 20 is 160. So we'll have 20, 40 milliseconds, 60 milliseconds, 80, 100, 120, 140, and 160. So if we take, um, so this is on, on this launch pad, okay, number six, uh, which is the wave effect. And if we go onto this launch pad, the right one, again, number six, I'll color that blue again, so you can see it. We have the same exact thing. So they're starting at the same time. So all we need to do is at the beginning of the effect, and we've already got one note length here, all we have to do is drag in another one. So this note length is already set to five seconds, which is enough for it to finish. All we have to do is say, okay, we need a delay of 160 milliseconds, and we need this one to be triggered when this turns off. So this is left ended, and this one is right starts, right? So this is basically the time, it's the delay for this launch pad, which we said is 160 milliseconds. And then when this, this note hold turns off, we get this one. So we need to set the trigger for this when it turns off. So note off. Then this one will keep on this five uh, seconds, which is enough for it to play through. So we created the delay before all of the rest of the effect. So all of this stuff has been delayed 160 milliseconds and boom, cross launch pad effect. So you can see it's actually, um, the concept might be a bit difficult, but it's really easy to actually create it. All you have to do is a bit of maths with the arpeggiator rates and then this. So this is a simple uh, note effect. It gets more complicated where you want to do something like a full spiral like this. 
Um, so maybe I'll do that in another tutorial after a few tutorials because uh, that's maybe a bit more advanced. So we'll have a look at more advanced cross launchpad effects in the future. But this is basically just the basics. So if you guys uh, haven't understood anything, please just write a comment below and I'll get back to you ASAP. And um, if you've got any more tutorial requests, just write a comment and I'll make that as soon as possible. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Cheers.